In this video, we discuss modularity, functions and procedures, and parameter passing by value and by reference. It's important you've got a solid understanding of the basic programming concepts and different data types before you watch these videos. We cover those in SLR playlist 8 and 13. Although you could learn the theory independently, it makes much more sense if you're able to work through these videos and their examples by implementing their concepts in real program code. These videos are therefore designed to reinforce and consolidate the understanding of programming techniques you will need for the exam, rather than teach you these concepts from scratch. Remember, the way to become a good programmer is by programming, little and often. You don't become a good programmer simply by watching videos and studying theory. So modularity is simply the concept of breaking a large program or problem down into smaller chunks. The goal is to design a program in such a way that each module carries out a single specific task. We looked at the benefits of this approach in our videos on computational thinking. Depending on the course, the textbook or the programming paradigm you're using, these modules may be referred to by different names subroutines, procedures, functions, methods, and more. In the exam, you need to think of modules as either procedures or functions and understand the difference between the two. A procedure is a block of code that takes in zero, one, or more parameters and performs a set task. A function is a block of code that takes in zero, one or more parameters, performs a set task and returns a value. It's very important that you fully understand the difference. Consider a module that's designed to output a high scores table held as an array in memory to the screen. The module can be called whenever it's needed. We could loop through the array and print the high scores out to the screen. There's no need for the module to return a value to the part of the program that called it. It just needs to get on and do its thing. This would therefore be implemented as a procedure. In other cases, you may want to call a module, typically supplying it with information, and get it to return something back to the part of the program that called it. In this situation, you'd need to use a function. So here's an example of a C-sharp function that returns the square root of a number supplied by the user. You can see we're calling the square root function, SQRT, which is part of the C-sharp math library. We're supplying the function with one parameter value in the form of an integer, in this case, 10. The value 10 would enter the function and the code inside will perform the square root calculation. The result would then be returned back out of the function. Note that the part of the program that calls the function must have somewhere for the value to return to. Here it's being returned and assigned to the variable x. Now, the return value from a function does not need to be assigned to a variable, so long as it returns somewhere valid. Console.WriteLine, available in languages such as Visual Basic and C Sharp, outputs text to a console command line. You might typically use it to output a literal string, as exampled here, console.WriteLine, open brackets, then in double quotes, a text string, high exclamation mark. However, in this example, the parameter we're passing into the right line command is the function call to math.sqrt, including its own parameter of num1. The function returns 6, which is output to the console via right line. Often you'll want to pass values into a procedure or function when you call it. The first line of a subroutine specifies the interface for that subroutine. The interface will look different depending on the programming language you're using, but broadly speaking, it outlines the name of the subroutine, 
the list of parameters it requires when it's called, the order of these parameters and the data type for these parameters. If the subroutine interface is for a function, it also typically includes the data type for the return value it's going to chuck out. Here we see an example of a procedure in Visual Basic called deductions. The interface for this procedure specifies two parameters, both the integers, the first parameter supplied will be stored in pay and the second parameter supplied will be stored in percent. Ignore the keyword by valve for the moment, we're going to explain that a bit later. When calling a procedure, you use its name and supply the number of parameters in brackets, ensuring you supply the correct number in the correct order and of the correct data type. OK, let's look at a slightly more complicated example, this time using a function with a return value. So we have a function called total tax. It requires a single parameter called cost. The supplied value must be of the data type integer. The return value will be of data type double. The function total tax is called in the procedure main at the bottom. When calling it, we pass in the single parameter it requires. Notice how the data type of the local variable sales price matches the data type that the function is expecting to receive. The value currently held in the local variable sales price 500 is copied into the new local variable cost and passed into the total tax as part of the function call. The function then executes and finally we hit a return line. It returns a value when it hits the return keyword as shown here. It's also common to use the name of the function to return a value. In this case, the return line would have read total tax brackets national tax plus city tax close brackets notice how the data type of the return value and the data type of the variable the return value ends up back in are the same in this case they're both doubles so when passing data into a subroutine there are two methods you can use passing by value and passing by reference. Some languages allow you to specify the way you pass data, others determine it for you based on the type of data being passed. In other languages such as Python, all values are passed by value. When a parameter is passed by value, the value created for the subroutine being called is a copy of the original. Once it's passed in, the parameter is held in a separate memory location and therefore it's only available to that subroutine. The copy is now a local variable of that subroutine. Here, the value 10 is assigned to the variable num at the start of the program and stored in address 00111. A copy of the contents of num is passed to the procedure triple when it's called, and the copy is stored in memory address 01000. Because this copy is a totally separate variable and local to its own procedure triple, the two versions can share the same name, even though they're completely separate variables existing in different places in memory. As we've passed by value, when num is multiplied by 3 inside the procedure triple, the value of the copied variable num is changed at memory address 01000. The value of the original num variable held in address 00111 is unaffected. When a parameter is passed by reference, a pointer that contains the memory address of the original variable is created. 
This means that any change to that value from within the called function will also affect the value of the original variable. Same as before, the value 10 is assigned to the variable num and stored in memory address 00111. This time, when triple is called, we pass the value of num1 by reference. The procedure triple receives a pointer, this time to the memory address of the variable num. The value passed in, 00111, is a pointer or reference to the location in memory of the original variable. So when the procedure triple multiplies num by 3 inside its procedure, it's the value of the original variable num which is updated in memory. So a quick note from the exam board, the OCR specification says unless stated, values passed to subroutines can be assumed to be passed by value. If this is relevant to the question, by val and by ref will be used. So in the case below, x is a variable being passed by value and y is a parameter being passed by reference. Now bear in mind these sort of keywords may not be familiar to you based on the language that you've chosen, but you do need to be familiar with these concepts and how they'll be shown to you in the exam. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Why is it a good idea to develop code in a modular way? What is the difference between a function and a procedure? And what is the difference between parameter passing by value and by reference? So that's everything you need to know for the exam. If you stick around for another 30, 40 seconds, we're just going to touch on something that goes a little bit beyond the specification. So if you pass a local variable by reference and then assign to it, the result is a change to the caller's variable, not what it is pointing to. Now, this type of implicit dependency is considered a really bad practice and virtually all newer languages therefore pass by value. In modern languages, variables tend to be of reference types where the actual object data is stored separately, usually on the heap, and only references to it are ever held in variables and then passed in as parameters. Passing such a reference is classed as passing by value because a variable's value is technically the reference itself and not the referenced object. The net effect on the program can be the same as either passing by value or passing by reference. Now this slide titled The Truth is another great example of where what you need to know for the exam at this level of study can be quite different from the reality of modern programming. Don't let it confuse you too much. If you understand what we've got in this video in the difference between passing by value and passing by reference, you'll be fine for your exam.